you were ever interested in learning the Raspberry Pi operating system, well then this video's for you. Stay tuned. Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the Raspberry Pi OS. If you saw last week's video, I did an unboxing of a Raspberry Pi 4, running eight gigs of RAM, and you can see that video right here. Really great kit, really enjoying it, and it's actually set up right behind me. Well today, I thought, since we went through the basics of just setting it up, I figured we go through the basics of the operating system, the OS of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna walk you through simple, basic stuff, so that way you guys can just get a feel of the operating system. And I think I got a couple tips that may help you navigate through this operating system. Now you don't have to install the desktop operating system, you could be running this just headless which you could use through terminal on a Mac, or you could use PuTTY through a PC. Now, if you're not planning on doing that, and you wanna actually see if you can use this as a real computer, like I'm trying to mess around with, this is the interface and how you use it, and this video will be very, very helpful to you. So let's go over to the Raspberry Pi. I got my keyboard and mouse set up, and I'm gonna record the screen so you guys can see what the interface looks like. So let's get started. All right, so here we are on the interface. I did make changes to this interface already, but I'm just going to show you around the Raspberry Pi operating system. The first thing I want to show you guys right up here, this is your actual like main menu. You click on the little Raspberry Pi and then you got all these different things that you can look at. LibreOffice, that's like Microsoft Word and Excel and so forth and so on. You got your internet. VNC is usually installed on the operating system. I've never played with the mail because I've never used it as a regular computer, which I'm gonna try and start doing to mess around with. But then you have your web browser right here. You got your sound and audio. I tried other things. Usually it's a VLC media player. You got your graphics, image viewer, games, accessories, help, preferences. Log out, this is what you want to know. If you want to log out of the system, you want to shut down or reboot. So we go to run, which will run a program. So I could put Steam link and hit OK, and it'll start running a program. So, and as you can see, it started Steam link. So I am going to get out of this because we don't need it. So escape. All right, shut down Steam link. If we click on the little raspberry again. We can go to preferences and you can go to Raspberry Pi configurations. This is what you guys wanna know if you're gonna be messing around with the interface. So basically, I'll show you what's in there. So you can change your password, you can change your host name, you can boot to desktop, or you can boot to CLI, auto login, you can disable it, disable it, network. There's a whole bunch of different preferences here, display, over scan. If you have borders around your display, that's what you want to do. But there's a whole bunch of different things in here, and some of them I know and some of them I don't. SSH, that's definitely, you want to enable that. VNC, you want to enable that if you're going to do what I'm doing, where you're broadcasting. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. that Some of the stuff I've played with, some of it I haven't. The camera, uh, remote geo PI pins, the pins that are actually on your Pi. I guess you can enable them or disable them. You got your preferences, you could change your memory, you could overclock, you could do a whole bunch of stuff here. You could disable the fan or enable the fan, which my fan should be on. Yeah, it's on. I don't know why it's, huh, that's weird. Location, you can set a location, you can set a time zone. You should have done that when you set up, but just in case you need to change it again or you move, there you go. Set keyboard, set up Wi-Fi country. I don't know why that's important, but apparently it's there. Okay, so then right next to that, you have your web browser. You can open that up. It does take a little time for the web browser to start up, but with a Raspberry Pi 4, you can actually view YouTube videos. All right, so here's an idea. We're not gonna have sound because I don't have a speaker hook to it, but there's an idea of the resolution you're gonna get, and it depends on the speed of what, what what's going on. But there's my video, for example, and I can actually put this up to, they say it could do 4K, but I don't have any 4K videos, but we're gonna go to quality, and we'll go to 1080p. It does take a minute, but we'll go full screen so you guys can get an idea, and the full screen doesn't work as well as I'd like it to. Let's do that again. I don't know why it went full screen with the browser. But anyway, you get the idea. Oh, there we go. Now, <laughs> you get the idea that it works, that you have a browser. It does usually run faster than this. I don't know why it's doing that. It could be something running in the background. And it also could be because I'm using VNC to actually remote view this desktop so that way I could show you guys 
how this works. The next one is like a root folder setup right here. So you got your root folder and it's home folder and it opens up so you can get into the actual folder configuration of the Pi. So if you're looking for certain things like or your home or you're looking for media or you're looking for anything, stuff on your desktops, downloads, you could look in your downloads and so forth and so on. And you can actually type them in here. So it's, this is very pretty basic from any operating system. You know, it's the basic folder file system. So we'll close out of that. And then we have terminal which if you're going to get into a Raspberry Pi, you have to become very familiar with Terminal. And this is basically everything that you need to do as far as working with a Raspberry Pi. If you were going to go headless, you'd be logging in, but you can actually get it on the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to install applications, this is usually the easiest way to install applications. So there's your Terminal. And what I like to do is I make a command chart. I don't know them by heart. So what I did was I made a little cheat sheet for myself so common commands and I'll let you guys see that so you can get a screen grab of that if you want most common commands that I use right now I have VNC running up here normally that wouldn't be there not unless you enable it you got your Bluetooth you can connect to your Bluetooth you got your Wi-Fi and you can search for other Wi-Fi's in the area right here or you can turn it off which if I turn it off I don't have a connection to it you got your audio right here if you click on it you can adjust the volume up or down Turn it off, turn it on. If you right click, you'll notice a little pop down menu comes up and you can choose your output or your inputs. Your output, if you do change one of these, so like for example, if I right now I have an analog, so I could use the actual 3.5 millimeter jack, it won't work until I reboot the Pi. Or if I want to do HDMI, I change it to HDMI, it won't work until I reboot the Pi. So make sure if you're going to use any of this stuff, you reboot the Pi and then you got your time. You pick which day. Now, with the time, if you notice, my time probably doesn't look like your time because I customized it. If you left click on it, you can go to clock settings and you can change the clock. I will try to leave in the description down below, but this is basically how you can change the clock right here. I googled it, what clock settings I could put in so that way I could see the format, but I wanted it just to be what time it was and then PM. So basically clock format is right here. So basically this is how you'd format the clock if you want to make it look like mine. And there's a whole different ways you could change the clock. And that's the only part I play with. I didn't mess around with anything down here. And you can where you want the clock, where you want the calendar to show up. And then if you go up here again, you can actually change the panel settings. So you could actually change the appearance of this panel up here. So if you want to make it like more see-through, let's see. So yeah, so I made that. See, I don't like that at all. <laughs> There's a lot of different settings, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can get an idea of what you want the interface to look like. And so. just in case you did want to see what Raspberry Pi operating system you're on, you could just open up a terminal window right here and paste in this right here which is which I'll leave in the description down below you hit enter and this will tell you what version of Raspberry Pi you are working with and it looks like I'm working with version 10 Buster that gives you all the information that you're going to need one thing I did want to show you guys just because it's a lot of fun is to change your screensaver like I did right click on it and you go to desktop preferences you can actually change the picture right here. And so if I wanna change a wallpaper, we'll hit open, see what that looks like. So that was another Raspberry Pi, but it didn't look good. And to stretch it out, you can center it or you could fit onto screen, change that. So now it's full screen. It just didn't look as nice to me as my original image. It's this one right here. And I put that one to center on image. There we go. And you can change the color, the text, you can do all kinds of stuff. That is just the basics of just this right here. And that is basically how you can play with your Raspberry Pi. I mean, go in there and explore. There's a lot of stuff. So that was the basics of Raspberry OS Buster series. This is the Buster series, which a lot of them, it really hasn't changed much. And this is 
part of my journey of seeing if we can actually get a Raspberry Pi 4 to run as a regular computer. As you can see, when I loaded up YouTube videos, you can view them and, and they do run really smooth and I'm sure if I overclocked this Pi, it would run even smoother and I wasn't recording. I think that was part of the problem as I was recording through VNC, which I may do a video on that. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see that. If you want to remote access your Pi, you want to know how to do that, I could set that up for you. But I hope this helped you guys in learning the OS. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If this helped you in any way, please like, subscribe, and share, and ring that bell if you want to get notified when I make a new video. It might be on a Raspberry Pi, it might be on a 3D printer, it might be on a new Mac, who knows? And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys! I think I like the pink glasses. I wonder if that's messing with my masculinity in any way. You're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just put, putting it out there.